when the saints go marching in. Vox Fidei brings you into the inner life of the world made flesh. Father Chris guides us in the lives of the saints in St. Louis series. Welcome. A St. Louis series. Today, 12th of August, we celebrate St. Jean Francis de Chanteur. Born in Dijoux, France, on the 28th of January, 1572, Jean Francis was the daughter of the royalist president of Burgundy. Her mother died when she was just a year and six months old. Her father then became the main influence in her upbringing and in her education. At 21, Jean Francis married Christopher, Baron de Chantel, whom she had six children for, but three died at infancy. As soon as she was married to him, she then discovered he was in a huge debt. It was a challenging moment for them as a family, but she stood by her husband. Due to the upbringing she had received from her father, she held to her faith and devotion to God. She helped reorganize her husband's estates, and the finances began to pick up again. She restored the custom of daily mass in the castle and engaged herself in various charitable works. Jane Francis shared God's blessing to her family with others. She would hand food to the poor and the hungry, who stand in long queues around her home every day, waiting to be handed what to feed on. Some would receive and go round, return to the queue like they had not received anything. When she was asked why she never questioned such people, Jean Francis said, What if God turned me away when I came back to him again and again with the same request? Her cheerfulness was crushed later in her life when her husband Christopher was killed in a hunting accident after seven years of their marriage. It was a difficult moment for her. Before her husband died, he forgave the man who killed him accidentally, telling him not to commit the sin of hating himself. Jean Francis sank into deep depression. She found it difficult to forgive the man who had accidentally killed her husband. But gradually, gradually, she succeeded. She started first by greeting him on the road. Then, she invited him to her house, had dinner with him, and finally completely forgave him, even to the extent that she became the godmother of his child. Jane was still deeply troubled, and she sought to solace and strength in prayer and contemplation. At the age of 32, Jane Francis came in contact with St. Francis de Sales, who became her spiritual director and her best friend. Through his guidance, she took a vow to remain celibate, unmarried, and desired to become a nun. But this didn't seem possible. With St. Francis' support, Jane Francis founded the Congregation of the Visitation of Holy Mary, or as it was also called, the Visitation Order a congregation for those whose age and health conditions hindered from being accepted in the already existing religious congregations. At the age of 45, she became a nun. They were primarily to exemplify the virtues of the Blessed Virgin Mary at the visitation to Elizabeth. Jane Frances underwent great sufferings. Francis de Sales, her best friend, died. Her son was killed. A plague ravaged the whole of France. Her daughter-in-law and son-in-law died. And all this pulled her down. At that moment of the plague, she encouraged the local authorities to ensure that victims were looked after. And she put all her convent resources at the disposal of the sick. Her style was based on the method of throwing yourself into God as a drop of water 
in the sea. There, we will find ourselves in the ocean of divine goodness. That was her style. She died while on a visitation of convents. This was in December 1641, precisely on the 13th, at the age of 69. As seen in her life, Jane Frances was a wife, a mother, a nun, and a foundress of a religious order. She shows us that longing for God also comes with great trials and challenges and difficulties. But when any thoughts or troubles of this sort, fears, grief, trials, depression, assail anyone, the person is meant to throw himself away into the ocean of God's love. That is where such things belong. And she said, don't forget also to throw yourself into that ocean like a drop. The date of her canonization is the 16th of July, 1767. She is the patron saint of the forgotten people, of widows, of parents who are separated from their children. The color of the day is white. What we offer the saints is veneration. God bless you. I'm Father Chris, Vox Fidei. When the saints go marching in, or oh, when the saints go marching in, Vox Fidei, God is in charge.